think I'm gonna have a bad day. I look so ugly. I don't think I'm gonna have any friends. And I think I'm gonna get bad grades. Oh, I look so perfect. I feel good and I ha I'm happy that I already have friends and I feel like they're gonna be at the same school because it's the first day of school. And I feel so good. I feel like I'm gonna get a lots of good grades. Wow, isn't that the way it is? Uh, our perception really does determine uh, what our reality is in so many ways. Well, welcome. We're, we're so glad that you're, you're back here for our uh, second session in our Love and Logic Parenting Seminar. Uh, thank you for your attendance tonight. Thank you for what I know was a great time whenever you, you worked with your uh, own children this past week, uh, teaching them the, the things that you've learned in our first session. We know whether or not it's working because if the kids don't like it, you're doing the right job. Well, today we're going to begin our, our second session, and uh, it's in chapter three of your book, Responsible Children Feel Good About Themselves. Enjoy the session. I want you to look at this picture. Tell me what you see. How about now, do you see anything different? Are you able to see both images in this same picture? I want to tell you something. Your child's self-concept is based on his or her own perceptions. If you remember in our last session, we uh, had a proverb, and it was, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he'll not depart from it. Well, we have another proverb for you this week. It's uh, from Proverbs 2011. Even children make themselves known by their acts, by whether what they do is pure and right. You know, my interpretation of this particular proverb says that even young children know the difference between right and wrong, and they, they uh, know when they're doing something that's good or when they're doing something that's, that's not good. And so uh, we as adults, we, we need to, to play off of that and try to bring out the best in our children and let them understand that the, the consequences of their bad decisions. Now I want to give you a list of behaviors and I want you to tell me whether it's a good self-concept behavior, a poor self-concept behavior, or a behavior that really doesn't have anything to do with self-concept. Here's number one. They forget to do their homework or their chores. They bully other kids around them. Maybe they're siblings. They have lots of friends and good relationships. Maybe they argue too much with their teachers, parents, or other responsible people. They do their chores regularly and on time. They don't get in too much trouble at school at all. Their teachers seem to like them. They steal, maybe from their siblings or from kids at school. They take responsibilities for the course of their lives. They withdraw into themselves when hard times come, when things get difficult, maybe. And are irresponsible in making good decisions. There are two kinds of mirrors. The obvious mirror is the one your child looks at when he's brushing his teeth or brushing her hair. And the other mirror is the mental mirror. And when your child looks in this mirror, they will think, I am what I think you think I am. As parents, we play a huge part in building the positive self-concept in our children through our words and our actions and in the way we encourage them. All these messages shape the way they feel about themselves. 
but sometimes some of these messages we send have hidden negative meanings. Whenever we order our children to shut up or to stop arguing, we're sending messages that cuts into their self-concept. When we give them orders, we subconsciously are saying, you don't take suggestions. You can't figure out the answer for yourself. You have to be told what to do. When we parent with love and logic, we emphasize a powerful combination, letting our children fail in non-threatening situations while emphasizing their strengths. We must be uncritical and unprotective. We all want our kids to develop a good self-concept. And if you look at this ladder, there are a few steps they can take to get there. The first thing they'll have to do is assume a risk. Perhaps do something they think they can't do or aren't comfortable doing, or maybe you give them an option and they make a decision on their own. At that point, they'll take the next step and they'll struggle. It's important for you to know that it will or may be hard for them. There may even be some consequences. Do not intervene and allow them to struggle. Once they've struggled and moved to the third step, they've made an accomplishment. They've done something on their own that they thought they could not do. At this point, they'll be able to reflect on their accomplishment. Building a child's self-concept is very much like a three-legged stool. I'm going to use pencils as my, my legs here. The difference between a stool with three legs and a chair with four legs is a stool will always be level. A chair or a table with four legs will never be level. And this has to do with what we're trying to do today as well. Uh, we, we want to do something that is grounded and uh, foundational. Um, the self-concept of our children is built upon the implied messages that we give them. Now, you say, well, you know, I, I don't do that. But actually, you do. Let's look at the first, first leg of the stool. The first one is, I am loved by the magical people in my life. Our love is something that is never conditional, meaning there's nothing that our child could do more that would make, them, make us love him more. And conversely, there's nothing that they could do less that would make us love him less. The, the second leg of our table uh, is that I have the skills to make it. They must know that they have everything necessary to make it in life here and here. Thirdly, we want to convey to our children that I'm capable of taking control of my life. I can make decisions and I'm strong enough that uh, I can live with the good or the bad consequences of those decisions. Let's talk a little bit about our relationship with our kids. I want you to think about your relationship with your child or your children right now as part of the three-legged stool in building a good self-concept in our kids. Because the closer and the stronger your relationship is with, is with your child, the harder he or she will work not to disappoint you and the more effective your consequences will be when they do make a mistake. Here are some tips on building and maintaining a loving, close, and strong relationship with your child. Number one, make every hello and goodbye a special event. Number two, at least once a day, notice something special about them. Number three, Love them even when they're behaving and not so lovable. And number four, this is a big one. Neutralize arguing. We're going to look at another example of the second leg called I have skills. Diego, what are you doing? I'm trying to cut an orange in half. Well, that's not the way you do it. Give it to me. I'll do okay. it, okay? Okay. Diego, what are you doing? Trying to get an orange out of the peel. Well, let me show you how to do it so that way you okay. can know how to do it, okay? Okay. First, you cut. Now the third leg 
of the three-legged stool is called I Can Manage. Let's look at this example. I love this game. I can be whoever I want. Daniel, didn't I tell you to do your homework? Why are you playing on your phone? Put that phone down right now. Do your homework. Do not argue with me. I love this game. I can be whoever I want. Daniel, son, are you finished with your homework today? Mostly. Well, as soon as you finish with your homework, your mom and I would love for you to join us for dinner. Parents have the tendency to praise their children. And it's understandable. After all, we all want them to feel good about themselves. But it's important that you watch out for the pitfalls. Praise can often be misleading or false. Let's watch this next skit. Daniel, is that your drawing? No, maybe, yes. This is one of the best things I've ever seen, Daniel. This is such a good job. You're a great artist. Hey, Daniel, is that your drawing? Uh-huh. Wow, what do you think about your drawing? It doesn't really look that good. Well, did you give it the best effort? I didn't really care about the drawing. Well, let me ask you this. Next time, what can you do differently to make it look better? Try my best. I think that's a wise decision, son. You know, our children learn most of what they know simply by following a model. And guess which model they usually follow? That's right, you. Uh, this can be a very uh, exhilarating idea, and it can also be a scary idea because uh, all of the good things you, that you do, you see uh, them do those as well, and all the bad things, they pop up as well. The most important thing that we can do as parents uh, in helping our children grow up to be responsible is to be responsible ourselves. Mom, 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 I need a sandwich right now. I'll make you a sandwich when I'm done reading this chapter in my book. Either you can wait or you can go make yourself a sandwich. 